Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back. Okay, in this video I want to explore the topic, or the following topic rather, which is being too dark skinned versus the acceptable dark skinned. And I'll explain where this came from and where I'm going with this, okay? Um, but this had came up um, about maybe a day or two ago. Um, and someone brought up, you know, hey, do you think, you know, what do you think about this? Do you think that there's, like, kind of like being dark-skinned, kind of like levels to being dark-skinned? And how maybe some people's dark skin, their shade of dark skin is more acceptable than other people's shade of dark skin. And I'll say in my personal opinion, I do kind of see that somewhat play out. You know, it's a little subtle. It's not very, it's not extremely blatant and in your face, but it does play out, right? Like, let's say uh, Alec Wick, right? The Sudanese supermodel. Some people, uh, particularly some black people even, I think she was like featured on the like a uh, magazine, some black magazine, I forgot which one. Um, <clears throat> and people kind of protested, you know, this is a black magazine and black people are protesting this because they feel like she shouldn't be on the cover because she doesn't, I guess they don't feel that she represents, you know, black beauty, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel as though her skin tone has something to do with that, right? Um, you know, oddly enough, I think it's her skin tone that gave her sort of like her way into the fashion industry, though. Um, again, just because of that sort of like, like that purity look, right? That very pure, you know, Native African, you know, look that her skin has. You know, uh, which works very well for other um you know, black models who are from the motherland, right? From Africa. Um, so yeah, I see it in that. Also, um, you know, it kind of affects males too, like darker skinned males as well. You know, um, Wesley Snipes, for instance, I think that his, like oftentimes people ref kind of like make jokes about his skin tone, <laughs> like him being like really dark skinned. And that sort of has been like a reoccurring or running running joke in the black community, you know, for a while. I think it's sort of died down because Wesley Snipes' career has died down. Um, but yeah, um, but you know, why is that? Why do we? Well, I didn't make the jokes, but of course. But why do we make the jokes as the community though? Like he's black, you know, <laughs> like. It, it, is that really something that's an oddity? <laughs> like he's just a little darker than some other black people, right? It doesn't, you know, it shouldn't be something that's extremely abnormal or out of the ordinary or, you know, something that is seen as other, you know? Also, um, I think when it comes to the men and the women, I think the jokes seem to be more so directed at the men versus the women, like the dark skin jokes. Because I think like the women, I don't think they would be very accepting of the dark skin jokes. I think a lot of women would be offended by those jokes, but I think the men could take those jokes a little better. You know, not that, you know, they probably haven't felt a little, you know, hit to the side, like, oh, like, you know. Also, like, um, Flavor Flav, during that whole com uh, comedy roast that he had, like, a lot of people were making, you know, jokes about his skin tone, because his skin tone is, like, really dark. A lot of people were making jokes about that. You know, and while we can say that, you know, jokes are, you know, ha-ha, you know, meant to laugh, you know, 
But you know what they say, there's always at least a little truth in jest. You know, right? And I'm sure Flavor Flav, you know, probably, you know, have heard those jokes before. There probably weren't anything new to him, unfortunately, right? You know? While on the other hand, there are people who are dark skinned, but it's like acceptable, or more acceptable. You know, like um, Kelly Rowland was mentioned, right? Kelly Rowland seemingly is like the acceptable dark skinned chick, you know? When we want a beautiful dark skinned chick, you know, dark skinned woman, hey, call Kelly Rowland, <laughs> right? And you know, um, I personally think that Kelly does look good, you know? Um, I personally kind of like the shorter hairstyles on her a little better. I think they sort of gave her a nice look, or a nicer look, I'll say. Um, you know, I think she wore those short hairstyles really well. And there was one thing that um, happened where, like, Beyonce wound up cutting her hair short. And then people started comparing her to Kelly with her hair short. And for once, for one time in history, Beyonce got the short end of the comparison. They were like, you know, Kelly looks way better with short hair than you do. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, Kelly Rowland circa, you know, old school Destiny's Child, you know, kind of like the first three albums, right? Good look, you know, good look. Um, or, well, her look that she has is good too, though. Um, but I would say that's like, to me, that's like her signature look, though, right? That's like the look that really she should, you know, go back to but I can understand her you know wanting to experiment with different looks since when she was in Destiny's Child she wasn't able to do that she had to keep her hair short and when it comes to the men I kinda feel like the acceptable dark skin man um, currently at least you know at the moment I would say maybe um, Idris Elba I think that's how you say his name uh, Idris Elba Right, and Idris Elba, I believe, is Native African too. Um, but <clears throat> I think that he is sort of like a bit the way that he looks. Um, I think that his skin tone is, I think, you know, the more acceptable, you know, PC dark skin. Right, kind of like him and Kelly Rowland are good examples of that. Like kind of like the PC acceptable dark skin. You know that the media um the mainstream media would you know promote yeah um but you know there's some darker skinned folks who probably should have more of a career perhaps i'll say like a couple examples i say like terry cruz and um the native African actor, um, um, Demon Hansun, I think that's how you say his name. Um, he was the guy that was married with uh, married to Kamora Lee Simmons and had a child with her. Um, they have a son together. I kind of think that uh, those two guys, you know, probably should have better careers than they have. Not that they don't have good careers, but the parts that they get, I think they probably should get better parts. But I, for some reason, I don't think they want to cast them in like parts that I that I personally think they should be part uh, play a part in. Like I kind of think that they should have a bit more like kind of like regal, um, you know, heroic, uh, like stronger roles. You know, showing them a bit more and in like. A powerful position, right? Yeah. And for the women, I think that you know, um, like Kelly Rowland and Lupita should have. I think Kelly Rowland's music career should be more than what it is. You know, I think that 
uh, Lupita's acting career, I feel like it's like low key on its way. I I feel like it's sort of like slowly gaining steam, but I can also see that steam sort of wearing out. You know what I'm saying? Like it could go either way. She could just keep on going, or it could wear out. Like the way that it looks now, you know. Um, another thing that I just thought of, you know, some black parents. I don't particularly know any black parents who say this fortunately, but some black parents do refer to like, you know, you know like their kids who are darker skin as like, you know, kind of like get your black ass over here or, you know, like they make re those type of references to their skin tone sometimes like. You know, when they get mad at them, it's like, you know, um, what's an example? Like, you know, you better sit your black ass down. You know, something like that. Maybe I have heard of that. You know, I've heard of that. I had a coworker who said that his uh, mom said something to him like, who, like she says that sort of a thing, you know. <clears throat> Y'all know it's always the mama. The dads ain't never guilty. <laughs> black daddies ain't never guilty of nothing y'all ain't know black women um, dark skinned black women especially they created colorism Yeah, they created this whole system to discriminate and oppress themselves yeah it's just all a part of their master plan yeah to have something to complain about yeah but seriously though um, you know but these are some these are things to think about though you know these are things to think about you know i've also heard like one time on like a tv show like oh it was like on a court show you know those shows where they go to court and um uh, one person sues the other person sometimes they win sometimes they lose but somehow it came up where this like black woman had said something to the extent of like, oh, you can't trust anyone um, whose skin is that dark, right? <laughs> or, um, you know, some people saying like, oh, they don't want dark skinned children, right? Um, what else? It's just really like a lot of, it's like uh, really subtle too. That's the thing. It's like, it pops up. On occasion, to the pop up out of nowhere, seemingly, you know, and it does affect both dark skinned men and dark skinned women. It does, you know. Some people may say differ, but it affects both of them in different ways. But it affects both of them. Um, I think for the men, it's like if you hear these things and these thoughts, you know, and it kind of affects them because a lot of times these men they kind of say kind of like to an extent repeat these same thoughts towards dark-skinned women you know so it's almost in a way like projecting you know projecting insecurities projecting self-hate projecting um, self-esteem issues onto a group of people who unfortunately are probably dealing with more or less those same issues themselves but are in a position where it's like the way that society is structured you they can't really they might not be in a position as a group to say hey what you're saying is bullshit no we ain't like you know because society sort of Cosigns it. All right. Yeah. But in my personal opinion, you know, is there such thing as being too dark? No, I personally don't think so. Um, you know, hey, I think there's a um, such thing as being ashy and too ashy, you know. But hey, um, just you know, make sure you got the cocoa butter, 
the baby oil, the lotion, and you're good, really. And that's the only thing like the dark folks need to really worry about, really. Just, you know, don't want to be walking around being like ashy. That's the only thing to me that's, you know, dark skinned folks really got to worry about. And if by chance you suffer from dry skin, it's all good in the hood. Just get you, you know, just, you know, stop by, you know, your local grocery store or whatever and pick you up some, you know, baby oil, some lotion, some cocoa butter, you know, <clears throat> moisturize, right? And you're good to go, really. Because that's the thing, too, like, you know, a nice gloss on, like, really dark skin, like a nice, you know, that sort of, like, it's dark, but then you see sort of like, um, kind of like a reflection, a glisten, you know, like a glisten, like dark skin that's like really moisturized and it glistens, like that's what's up, right? That's, you know, what's good. You know, and everybody can't, you know, all skin tones can't capture that glisten like that, you know? Especially like if you do this on if you do that on white people, eh, you ain't gonna see nothing. If you do it like on you know brown, you know beige folk, mm, you know you might get a little something something. But if you do that on like really dark skinned people, you gonna get like like you know something that's really like captivating and mesmerizing, just off of you know a glisten, <laughs> just off of like you know a little glisten on your skin, you know a little moisture on your skin. Yeah. as well it sort of creates like kind of like a really rich quality to the skin you know to the skin tone in my opinion um, also you know darker skin people you know especially the dark dark skin people tend to really age well from what I see you know uh, and of course you know having you know built-in sunblock really helps right? um, that is a really good thing especially when it comes to like um you know dealing with the sun definitely but i think i'll bring this video to a close for now but what do you guys think do you think that you know there's some truth in being too dark versus you know, being the acceptable dark. Do you think it's all the same? Let me know in the comments section. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now. And also one more thing before I go. Hopefully none of you guys were like offended when I said the whole ashy thing. It's just a joke. Like I said, there's truth in jest, but don't take it to heart. I'm just making some jokes. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> you know. But, you know, I think that, like I said, that is a true thing, but, you know, of course, not all dark-skinned people have ashy skin, you know. <laughs> Heck, my skin gets ashy, like, in the winter time, like, this, um, I don't know what you call this, I guess hand, um, this part of my hand, um, oddly enough, gets, at, like, really ashy sometimes. I don't know why, like, the dryness, you know. <clears throat> And oftentimes it's like j just this hand. It's not the other hand. <laughs> like what the what's up with that? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know. But it's okay. It's all right. You know. And that's what's up. You know. You know. Technically, everybody gets ashy. You know. It's just that on some folks, you just can't see the ash. <laughs> it's kind of like how everyone turns red, but you know. On some people, you can't really see red because it just is covered up, right? Because, <laughs> or else you have to look like really close to it to see the redness, right? You have to really examine it. <laughs> but that's all for now. Thanks for watching.